If you're like me and live in the country, you've probably got low water pressure because your house runs off a pump. This also means your hot water pressure is really bad as well. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how I doubled my hot water pressure. Um, for those who don't want to watch the whole thing, all I did is I put a pressure valve on the top of the hot water overflow pipe. Okay, for those who want to stick around, here's a bit of history. In the old days, hot water cylinders used to also be heated by things called wetbacks. So you'd light the fire in your house or your stove, and behind it were copper pipes that would also run into your hot water cylinder. And they would create really hot water, which was awesome if you've ever lived on a farm. A hot bath from a wet back is awesome. The problem is um, that hot water creates a lot of pressure and for safety reasons, what they'd do is they'd put a large overflow pipe on the top of your roof. So if the water started boiling, it would be okay because the uh, hot water would just go out that pipe. The problem with that pipe is it's not that tall. So there's not a lot of distance for the water to fall and build up pressure. And what that means is when you're having a shower, the hot water pressure isn't as strong as the cold water pressure, which is coming directly from your pump. Um, to get around this problem, and I've seen this done on houses by plumbers, is they'll add more pipe to the top of the overflow pipe. So it has more head on it, which creates more pressure. This can do well if the pipe's high enough, but it's never going to be as good as the pressure coming directly out of your pump. Um, as an example, my pump is eight bar maximum. It doesn't do that, but when it is sort of pumping its hardest, it can do eight bar, which would be spread between the hot water and the cold water. So now let's talk about pressure. If I lived in a city, I could get around 24 liters per minute um, if that was going directly to your kitchen sink and you put on the hot water, that's a lot of water being used. But normally in your shower, um, it's more economical and the shower head reduces that pressure and then mi mixes it with the cold. But it's still a lot of pressure. As an example, before I put the valve on my overflow pipe, I was only getting two liters per minute. Um, and when you mix that with the cold, it was very little pressure. It took ages to get clean and it just wasn't comfortable. When I put the valve on, it then doubled the pressure. And when you mix that with cold, it's actually more than doubling it. It feels like it's two to three times as much pressure. And now it actually feels like a real shower. So what do you need to do to do it to your house? Well, the first thing you need to do is get on your roof and measure the diameter of your overflow pipe. Mine was 20 millimeters, or it was a three quarter inch. Um, I was also really lucky because the previous owner of the house had had the overflow pipe extended, which meant that it already had pipe joining it together that had a thread, which meant that all I had to do was take off the top pipe and I could just screw on my valve Many homes won't have that, so you'll probably have to get a plumber to do it for you to um, put a thread on the top of your overflow pipe so you can add the pressure valve. Once the pressure valve is on the top of your overflow pipe, um, you have to get to the bottom of your hot water cylinder. Sometimes the Ajax valve at the bottom of the hot water cylinder is actually in the hot water cupboard. But in the case of my house, it was actually underneath the floorboards and I had to crawl under the house and then increase the pressure of the Ajax valve to let through as much water pressure as possible to the hot water cylinder. And of course that increased the, the, the pressure and then I went in and tested it in the shower and it was great. Now it's been going like this for a month and I haven't had any problems and I wish I'd done this when I first purchased my house eight years ago. Okay, now here's some tips. The temperature 
of the element in your hot water cylinder should be 60 degrees Celsius, or if you live in the United States, 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't make the temperature higher than this because it will just keep on heating up your hot water, which will waste power and it really doesn't give you much of a benefit. One other thing you'll notice is because you're using a lot more hot water, you will use a lot more power. So as an example, um, my hot water cylinder is actually heated by solar power and I monitor it. Now, before I added on the uh, pressure valve, it would take about two kilowatts to heat up the hot water cylinder after I'd had a shower and, the, and done the dishes. Um, only two kilowatts. But when I increased the pressure, um, it then was using four to five kilowatts to heat up the hot water cylinder. So yes, it is using a lot more hot water, but I don't care because it feels way better. Now some tips for your hot water to conserve power. Um, I've also got a timer on my hot water cylinder. And so it actually only runs for um, a few hours a day. I, I do that when there's plenty of sunlight, so it's free. Um, and then it stays off until the next day because the water in that hot water cylinder easily lasts 20 hours and it's still hot the next morning. So if you are going to get a plumber out, also get them to install a timer because it will save you a lot of money. I've monitored my power when the timer wasn't on there and it was always kicking in and then turning off and kicking in and turning off because when you're in winter, of course it's cold. So the hot water cylinder has to keep on heating itself and that's just a waste of power. So yeah, put a timer on your hot water cylinder. Uh, the other tip is, even though your hot water cylinder has insulation, insulate it more. Um, you don't have to go out and buy that big fancy insulation, um, the silver stuff that they put around the cylinder. Use lots of old blankets. I've, I've got old woolen blankets, which are great. And I've basically just filled up my hot water cylinder with old blankets, which keeps the hot water cylinder nice and toasty warm um, and it meant I didn't have to throw out that old bedding because now it's keeping my hot water cylinder nice and hot. If you've got any questions please feel free to leave a comment below um, and if you've got any tips that might help anybody else again leave a comment. Hope you enjoyed this video.